The agenda for today's talk is to show if a non-central chi-square distribution can be written as a mixture of chi-square distributions with Poisson weights. Now this was spurred on by a video I did earlier where I drive the non-central chi-square distribution and I ended up with this result right here. I said, hey, this is this is the density of a chi-square, non-central chi-squared with k minus one degrees of freedom with non-centrality parameter lambda. And at the end of it, I said people do uh, some manipulation and can change this to a mixture of chi-square distribution with Poisson weights. So I wanted to just show this to prove it to myself. I wasn't going to show this in a video, but it's too neat or too fun to to not do. And sorry for the sloppiness. About three or four pages in, I thought, Ugh, I don't really want to rewrite this. So I'm going to show you what I did. So this this density, um, instead of k minus one degrees of freedom, I write it as k degrees of freedom. So wherever there's a k minus one, I write it as a k. So k minus one is k. K here it changes to k plus three. So we're working with that density here. Okay, and I ran out of page, so I rewrote it. Um, and I did notice that this e to the t minus two can be uh, canceled with here, and I think that's what I show here. Um, one of these twos, I need to take and 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 divide it here because then this is the uh, hyperbolic cosine function and so that's what I do here I show that I can grab a 2 from there and, and bring it out um, and instead of carrying this down to each calculation I'm just going to call it C uh, so I can be a little bit lazy in my derivation so the top equation can be rewritten like this and nothing has changed there's the divide by two which that is the hyperbolic cosine function and it can be rewritten in a Taylor expansion which is what I do here this is the Taylor expansion of the hyperbolic cosine function and a lot of these notations you you're gonna see because as I'm doing this I make notes to myself so this piece here, I bring in and then multiply it times each. This is a constant in regards to the inter integral from 0 to w. So I just rewrite the constant and call it c1 where that's part of it. And then this is the formula. I just It's simply multiplying that out and it's still an uh, integral. So here, I take note that a W can be pulled out of here and rewritten like this. And then even when if it's raised to a power, you can still pull out the W and then distribute the multiplication. So you can do that for each term in here. So I rewrite the equation using this little trick here. So I pull out a W in each term. So nothing fancy yet. Now I want to make a substitution uh, where U is this piece in the parentheses then back solve for T and then take the derivative of, of T and I get minus W U. Now I make that substitution in and I get this. So I plug in a U um, wherever there was a, uh, a 1 minus T and then this uh, W you know goes away this T is then W minus U and so anyway I, I get this and then um, I want to check the limits of integration and uh, I, I, in the T world, I went from 0 to W, but in the U world, I have to go from 1 to 0. And then I put it there. But I don't like that. I want to go from 0 to 1. 
And then um, I noticed that this W here, or this negative sign, can be used to reverse this integral. So I'm going to go from um, uh, 1 to 0 and change it to 0 to 1 by taking that negative in. So then I, I don't even, oh, so yeah, so I, I take all the, I take the W's here, take these W's and combine them, um, and then I, and that's the next step. So in each term, I combine the W's. And, and these were from before, these were from before, I just combined the W's. Now, the, it's written like this, and oh, and I write it to um, a U something minus one, one minus U, you know, something minus one. I'm being vague because you'll see in a second. So if X is a beta distribution, and we know that it, well, X goes from zero to one, if you integrate a beta distribution, which is this density right here, it integrates to one but these are constants so you can take them out front and then when you integrate this you get uh, the ratio of these gamma functions so each integral here so these are constant and this is a beta function with alpha that and beta that so I rewrite each integral as now this. So notice that the integral went away because we did integrate. And we just have our constants out front, which were this, and then each is the ratio of these betas. So now we need to simplify it even more. Remember that our C1 has a gamma of k over 2 in it, in the denominator, and each of these terms have a gamma of k over 2. So those will cancel. And then here, um, one property, here we have a gamma of a half, here we have gamma 3 over 2, gamma 5 over 2, but the gamma function has an interesting property that gamma 3 is 1 half, gamma what is 1 half. Gamma 5 over 2 is 3 over 2 times that. And you can just keep going in this fashion. And the reason I write it like this is because there's a gamma to the one half in our denominator, constant one. So each of these uh, gamma, you know, seven over twos can be rewritten as the product of some numbers times gamma to the one half. So that gamma to the one half can cancel with this gamma to the one half. But how are we going to deal with this here? So the bottom is just the product of, of twos. Um, which can be rewritten as, you know, one half to raise to the power. But these products are a little bit trickier to deal with. So we're going to introduce um, the, the double factorial. And this is a real thing. And it means take that in and then take it times two less than that. And then four less and you just keep going. Subtracting two each time until you either get to a one or a two. And that depends upon whether this is even or odd. And... Um, that's how we're going to re rewrite this, okay? So this equation becomes this. So the gamma to the uh, one-halves cancel, the gamma to the k over 2 cancel, and we have um, like 7 double factorial over 2 to the 4th, 5 double factorial over uh, 2 to the 3rd. Um, so each of those we have here. Now we need to simplify this more. It'd be nice if we could do something with the factorials and the double factorials. And, oh, and one other note is that this denominator, 2 to the squared, all these 2's here are going to be written into this lambda. So it's going to be lambda over 2, all raised to the 4th power. And we're going to do that for each of those. But now let's deal with this double factorial and the factorial. So again, note that a double factorial is, is uh, written like this. 
and um, if even if n is even, double factorial can be rewritten as this. So n raised to the n over two, n over two factorial. And I'm not going to prove it. It's a pretty straightforward proof. And if n is odd, it can be rewritten as this: n plus one factorial. You know all you know over this here. So how does that help us? We have something like this. We have n minus 1 double factorial over n. And I'm going to pull this up here. So we have, say, 8 factorial, and then in the numerator we have 7 double factorial. So we are in this setting. So then this uh, we can replace by this, which we showed here. And then we just have n factorial. So then those n factorials cancel and we get 1 over this. So we can rewrite the equation as this. So remember the two was pulled in from over there and the double factorial and the factorial can be rewritten as this piece here on each of those. Now we're, we're getting really close. We're on the home stretch, the last page. So this can, it can be rewritten as a sum from J to infinity like this. And now the next step, I want to bring these in here in, in a very unique way. And we're going to write it in this fashion here, where this looks like a Poisson, and this is a central chi-square distribution. <coughs> and that's what we have. So we're finished, sort of. Um, and I want to point out that we started with a, a, a non-central chi-squared with k degrees of freedom non stratified parameter lambda. But in the previous video, we, we wanted to show that this sum of uh, xi squareds was a non-central chi-squared distribution, k minus 1 degrees of freedom non stratified parameter lambda, where the xi's were normal mu i1 and the lambda was uh, uh, the sum of the mu i squared. So thus in the video that that I did before, we that that density was a non-central chi squared with k minus one lambda, which would then be rewritten as this. That extra one over here goes away. And this is what you see in the literature most often. Hope you enjoyed it.